excited to share a recipe with you for a really easy put together side dish that has so much flavor. Now, like many of you, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, I've not been able to travel any this summer. That is another one of my passions. I love cooking and I love traveling and I love eating around the world. So I thought I would try to take us on a little bit of a journey. That's the cool thing about your kitchen is you can travel anytime you want to with cuisine from different countries. So what we're gonna make today is a version of ratatouille, which is of course a French dish um, made famous by the Walt Disney film, featuring one of my favorite Disney characters. He's actually the icon on my Disney Plus account, is Remy. Um, we're gonna make ratatouille today, which is, like I said, is a French dish, but we're gonna take the ratatouille on a trip too. We're gonna take it over to Greece. So it's gonna be a little bit of Greek influence in there in this ratatouille. Um, the first thing that I have done is done a lot of prep work. My knife and I have been busy um, chopping up a lot of different vegetables. This is a purely uh, vegetarian dish, side dish. You can eat it on its own or serve it with something else as a main course, um, and it is awesome. First thing I've done is I have chopped up either one large or two small eggplants. I put some olive oil in a saute pan, and I've had these going for I'd say about four minutes or so, just until I get a little bit of caramelization um, on those. And then standing by over here, I have a Dutch oven, and it's cold. It's not been on the heat at all. It's just there, and that's the pot that we're going to build our ratatouille in, okay? So now that I've got the eggplant sautéed pretty decently, got some good color on those, that just goes into the pot. Flatten that out a little bit. Great. Then, I'm gonna put some more oil in my pan. And the next layer is a diced onion. I use sweet onions in all of my recipes. That's just what I prefer, but you could use a Spanish red, you could use whatever you wanted to, whatever you've got on hand. And I've also got a diced orange bell pepper. Again, you can use whatever you want, green, red, yellow, does not matter, but some version of a bell pepper in there. If you wanted to kick up the spice in this a little bit, you could even use like a poblano. Um, that would be kind of nice too for flavor. So I've got all of those sauteing in the pan. And I'm gonna let those go for at least a couple of minutes. If you see your pan getting dry, just add a little bit more olive oil. Turn down your heat a little bit. You just want to get those not quite fully translucent, these onions, because there's going to be plenty of true cooking time happening in the oven once we put all of this together. You just want to give these a little bit of a head start. Another thing that's always going to help those onions to sort of render out some of their liquid is some salt. So to this layer, I'm gonna add some salt, heavy pinch, and some pepper. That'll help those keep going. Oh yeah. It already smells good and I'm on like layer two of this ratatouille. Speaking of making things smell good, so what you're going to see is that we're going to do this similar process over and over again with different layers of vegetables and flavor. And the tail end of that process is some minced garlic. I've minced about five or six cloves. It's about a clove per veggie that you're going to put in there. So this is about one of those cloves of garlic put in with the onions and the pepper. Stir that around just a little bit. Oh yeah, that garlic hitting that pan is kind of one of my favorite smells on the planet. Nice. All right, those are just starting to get sort of softened, but not all the way. And you see that only took, what, a couple of minutes, if that. And then that layer of peppers and onions also goes 
into our Dutch oven with some garlic. All right, now, same process with olive oil in the pan. And I've got one zucchini diced and one yellow squash diced. Into decent sized chunks, you're gonna want the zucchini, the squash, and the eggplant to be around the same size, basically. Drizzle of oil over those veggies. Get those going. Sprinkle of salt. Sprinkle of pepper. And I'm just gonna let those caramelize. These are going to take a little bit longer to get some caramelization on them than the onions and the peppers. So I'm going to let these go for about four minutes or so, and then we'll be right back. All right, gang, gang I am back. I've got this going, the zucchini and the squash, for about four or five minutes uh, to get it caramelized. I'm going to add my clove worth of minced garlic into the pot with it, just like I did with the onions and the yellow bell pepper. You don't want to put that in immediately because the garlic will burn if you let it go the entire time that you're cooking the zucchini and the squash. So just towards the end, throw that garlic layer in. You will smell it once it is getting there with that garlic, for sure. Great, so now, my zucchini and squash layer also goes into the pool with all the other veggies that we've made so far. All right, now, I told you that we are going to go on a little trip to the Mediterranean, to Greece perhaps, um, and that's what this next layer is all about. Tomatoes, herbs, garlic, and Kalamata olives are going to take us there. So first thing I'm going to do is take some diced, fresh tomatoes with another layer of garlic into my pan just to get the garlic mixed in with those fresh tomatoes mainly. And while that's working, I also have a 28 ounce can of plum tomatoes whole and peeled. And all I'm gonna do is get in there with my hand, got a utensil, and crush those in this bowl. Because I think sometimes when you get like the crushed ones in a can, you lose all of some of the texture that you could get by just roughly crushing these with your hands. Alrighty. Get my hand wiped off from that. Tomatoes are still going over here. Give them a little love of olive oil too. Great. Again, I'm all about texture. So again, putting the fresh tomatoes with the canned tomatoes is again gonna help us with that tomato layer of texture along the way. Give those a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper, seasoning every single layer. There's th this dish is so packed with flavor and everything you can do to help create that flavor along the way, the better for sure. All right, those have had enough time. The last thing I'm going to add to this same pan after I've had the tomatoes go for a while is I have about a half a cup of pitted Kalamata olives that I've just roughly chopped. So I'm gonna throw those. That's gonna add quite a bit of salt content to this mixture. But man, I love the flavor of Kalamata olives. I, I, growing up, I was not a huge olive fan. In fact, if there was anything that was gonna have an olive on it, I was like, no, no thank you, leave that off. But you know, your tastes change over the years, and now I love just straight up eating Kalamata and green olives. Still not a huge black olive fan, um, but I do love the flavor and the brininess 
of a good Kalamata or green olive. Great, that does not need much saute time at all for those tomatoes, garlic, and just to heat through a little bit of those olives. And then that sort of Mediterranean Greek layer is gonna go into our French ratatouille. Um, now, as you can tell, like a lot of ratatouilles you may have seen pictures of have like all these fancy layers and, and the plating is just beautifully designed with each slice of, of the vegetable showing. This is an easy one pot wonder. And so it is not that same level of presentation for sure. But I, I guarantee you that the flavor in here is unbelievable. All right, lastly, I'm gonna take those crushed tomatoes, put those in. They didn't really need to cook necessarily. Set that to the side. And make a little space for myself with the giant swimming pool. All right, lastly, I'm gonna take the rest of my garlic and throw it in the pot. I know it's raw garlic, but that is gonna cook and melt lovely when we throw this Dutch oven into the oven. All right, last two steps. A lot of ratatouille recipes will call for anchovy paste. That is not a condiment that I have on hand all the time, but I found that an easy go-to substitute for a little bit of that same flavor is actually Worcestershire sauce. What's this here sauce, says my family probably has said at some point. I don't know. I think I've said it too, so I can't really just blame my family. And I'm going to put a full two tablespoons of Worcestershire into this pot. One last sprinkle of salt for those canned tomatoes to get some love. More pepper as well. And then... I'm just gonna stir all of these veggies together. And even though it's not like a layered ratatouille, the colors are really beautiful at this point. Now, once you take it out of the oven, they've darkened a little bit and it's not nearly as colorful as the dish, but I think it is gorgeous right now. So I gotta show you a picture. I mean, look at all those beautiful vegetables. That's gonna be so tasty. All right, last step on our Mediterranean journey. We are gonna put in some herbs. Now, the usual suspects for this would be like some rosemary and some thyme. I am gonna still use a bunch of thyme. I'm just taking those sprigs and tossing them in on the side, taking a giant sprig of fresh basil love that lemony flavor of basil and I'm going to stuff that in on another side and my last component for our Mediterranean piece of our travels today is fresh oregano I grow this in my garden as well um, and it grows so fast like I don't think you can come up with enough oregano recipes to use all the oregano um, but this one I thought was would be a good addition since we're going to go this sort of Mediterranean route so all I'm gonna do now that I have everything in this Dutch oven is I'm gonna put it into a 350 degree preheated oven for about an hour and let all of those flavors melt together. Now you notice we didn't put any liquid into this other than those two tablespoons of the Worcestershire sauce and any oil that was residual in the pan. The juice from all of these vegetables are plenty of liquid. Um, so you can, you know, take a look and see, but I guarantee you even more of those liquids from natural juices from the vegetables are going to seep out during the cooking process in the oven. So I'm going to pop this in the oven and in about an hour we are going to have an amazing Mediterranean Greek ratatouille. Hi y'all, welcome back to Bradley the Singing Chef. So I've just taken my Mediterranean Greekish ratatouille out of the oven. It stayed in there covered for about an hour. And I've taken it out and I've let it rest um, here on the counter for just a couple of three minutes, just to cool it down. But I have got to show you the beauty that is in this pot. I mean, come on, look at all those beautiful colors of all of those veggies and that beautiful tomato juice that has come out. 
It's gonna be amazing. Now the first thing I need to do before I put this in my serving dish is fish out those herbs that we put in, the sprig of the oregano, the sprig of thyme, and the uh, sprig of basil. If you tuck them in on the side, they're pretty easy to find. You can also use kitchen twine and like tie these together um, if you want to be even easier about it. But I can pretty much see where those three landed for me in the pot because you don't want any of those stems in your dish. And then I'm going to take and pour all of this in my serving dish over here. I mean, that is enough for a feast. But here's the thing about this dish. You could serve this like so many different ways. Of course you can serve it on its own um, as your main dish if you want to be vegetarian or just as a side dish with maybe some um, herb roasted chicken, which you can find the recipe for that on my channel at another video. Um, or you could serve it over pasta. Um, it would also be a great layer in a lasagna if you wanted to do that too. Serve it over some polenta or whatever you, you would like. Um, this is a really, really versatile dish um, that goes with a little bit of everything, to be quite honest. So I've got to taste this, so I'm gonna serve up a portion here on my plate just to taste. Oh my goodness, that looks so good. And then, just to take us on our fancy traveling trip even further to the Mediterranean, I'm going to tear up some fresh basil, just to release some of the oils. Sprinkle some of that on top. And lastly, I'm going to take some feta cheese. You could use parm if you've got parm too, but I'm in a Greek kind of mood. So get some crumbled feta, just right over the top. And I am ready to dig in. Isn't that beautiful? So much color and so much flavor. All right, I gotta get around and try this. It's hot, it's right out of the oven, so. Mm. Oh my goodness. There's so much flavor in there. The garlic flavor has just like oozed through all of those vegetables. That Worcestershire gives it a little bit of bite and the feta cheese and the basil just top it off perfectly. You are gonna wanna make this recipe and I hope you will. I hope you'll continue to join me here on Bradley the Singing Chef. Please subscribe, like, and share my videos here on YouTube. I look forward to joining you in the kitchen again soon. I hope you will always eat well. Love always.